AC pressure sensor fuel tank pressure sensor and fuel level sensor so we got the power going to the sensors we, we talked about the grounds and the input input terminals to the P ECM or slash PCM remember the input terminals to the PCM is how the computer know what's going on these sensors have to send a signal back to the ECM slash PCM to tell them to tell the PCM or ECM what's going on in the physical world for instance if I have a cold car I just start the car in the morning my cooling sensor has to tell the PCM to increase the fuel and raise the idle because the car is cold if I'm on the load my mass sensor has to tell the PCM the car is under load and give it more fuel. My watch and the PCM watches that signal line. If I step on the gas pedal, the PCM needs to see that I'm hitting the gas pedal and it needs to inject the adjusted timing and pulse width based off those signals. Pin 18 and pin 19. Now, look on top. We have pin 2 and pin 3. Pin 2 says to B plus in a start and run position, fuse number 2. So, let's go into the battery positive, battery voltage. The start and run position only. Going to fuse number two that feeds pin two of the ECM. It's probably come from the ignition. Number three here, our terminal number three, it's battery plus also. You can see here it's coming from the battery plus at all times to do fuse number three. So the PCM has system voltage or charging system voltage uh, 2 and 3 and ground and pin 32 so here's my power for the PCM and hit the PCM ground now look up to the right Fuse number four. It's also very positive in the start and run position, which goes to fuse number four. Now let's look at this. On this side of the chart, it's my actuator side. This side was my This side was the input side. Going to my PCM. Then my PCM will make a logical decision and give a command out to my actuators. So we're going to discuss the actuators. Again, let's go back to fuse number four. Fuse number four. Battery voltage start and run position. Now, if you look at, the, if you follow this diagram, it goes all the way down. So anything that splices into that line is hot, and it goes over to also goes over to diagram number two. It flows this way also to diagram number two. We'll talk about that one later on. So anything that splice to that red line is high. So let's talk about the first one, fuel pump relay.
That's your fuel pump relay here. Here's your fuel pump. That's the actuator. That's your fuel pump. Now you can see the fuel pump has its own ground. Probably on the frame so in the chassis of the car. But as you can see here, there's no connection to that fuse number four. There's no dot there. That means it doesn't connect to fuse number four. But what I do have this connection here, fuse number three. As you can see, it goes here to terminal three, but it also goes here to that first dot and sits here in a fuel pump relay. It just sits and wait until it's needed. Now, by fuse number four, the power coming through fuse number four does go to the relay here. It goes through the coil here, comes out here, and goes into the PCM. Now, here's the magic on this. That's my load device. That's the power going into my load. If I have power going to one side and I have a load, that means the other side, which is this, has to be a ground. As you can see here, the PCM grounds. the fuel pump relay internally. So I will have power coming to fuel number 4, going to terminal A of the fuel pump relay, come not B, going to terminal 4 of the fuel pump relay circuit on the ECM, waiting for a ground. Once the computer sees a crank signal input from the crank sensor, it will then complete the ground on pin 4. Now what happens then, magnetism builds up on the coil, and now it pulls those, four, those pole pieces together. Now, you, if you remember back a second ago, that's hot. So once this gets pulled together by magnetism, that voltage will now travel to the pump, through the pump to ground, and now the pump now the pump comes on. Now, for that to happen, remember, the computer needs to see a crank input while you're cranking the car over. Now, you could turn the key on the engine off. You might get a fuel pump for like two seconds. If the computer does not see that crank sensor input, it releases the ground and the pump goes off. Now, let's walk down the line to the rest of them. The next one is five and six. As you can see, both actuators, one for the AC fan AC clutch and one is for the fan control relay. Okay, one turns the fan on at a certain temperature. And once for the AC, turn the AC clutch on for a certain pressure at a certain pressure. But you can see the but you can see the cooling fan again. Let's look at the cooling fan really quick. It's 
a bad drawing. As you can see, the cooling fan again. Another bad draw. The cooling fan relay is connected to shoes number four. The same process. Here it goes in the pen six of the ECM. Once the ECM sees a certain temperature has been reached, it completes the ground. And magnetism builds on the coil. The relay now comes on. And send the voltage over to the cooling fan motor. I hope this is making sense. I'm, I know I'm going kind of fast, but hopefully it makes a little sense. The next one is, the next items up, 7, 8, and 9, the control for four cores for bank number one. You can see that's the ground control or the trigger, trigger control for the coils on pen 7, 8, and 9, or coils 1, 3, and 5. Here's the coils. Here's the plugs. And here's my power for the coils. It goes through the coils out to terminal seven, A. And nine. And that's the trigger to turn the course off and on. The next one, the next set is 10, 11, 12 for bank two plugs. Oops. That's for 2, 4, and 6. Turn those 10, 11, 12 for bank 2 plugs. Again, the same process. That's the trigger or the control. Here's the coils. And here's the plugs.